Hey, my name is Joey. Welcome to my shop. Today we are going to be building a super high power our marshmallow gun. So what we've got is over here we've got our parts. This is a uh, sprinkler valve I picked up at a yard sale. One inch pipe, standard one inch male slip coupling. Here's our uh, test marshmallow. As you can see, hear that sound? That's a good sound. It fits really well. So the next step is going to be to take the rest of the pump parts and glue them all together so we have an air tank. Do a little touch up on our valve so that it works properly and we can uh, empty it at the touch of a button. The plan is to take the valve like this, attach this awesome one inch street elbow that uh, Home Depot started carrying. It just so happens that the one inch street elbow is the same outer diameter as inch and a quarter pipes. So we've got an inch and a quarter cap that we're going to use as a bushing because I couldn't find an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half bushing at Home Depot. So we're going to turn this down just a little bit on the lathe to make it fit. And on top of that, we're going to stick this elbow like so. A little short piece of two inch pipe followed by a two inch cap. To power this bad boy, we're going to put a uh, Schrader valve, which is a really fancy word for just one of those tire valves you put in your rim. Okay, so you don't put it in your rim, but whenever you have your tires changed, they put a new valve in the rim. It's the uh, valve you fill your tires up with. Really cool valve because all you got is drill about a uh, half inch hole in anything that's flat. So we're going to drill it right here on this surface of the street elbow. And then you just pull it through. It's kind of hard to pull through, but once you pull through, it seals like a charm, works great. So once we're done, we'll have this all set up. It's probably good for, you know, you can. First thing I'm going to do, because my lathe is my new toy, so I'm going to go ahead and turn down this uh, inch and a quarter cap. A little bit of touch up with our knife to get out this inside edge. There we have it. One inch and a quarter cap turned into an inch and a quarter by inch and a half slip bushing. Alright, the inside and the outside are clean, so uh, let me go cut a piece of two inch pipe and then we can get gluing. Just push the two pieces together and give it a twist. Now, this is a tricky part because I'm not quite sure how I'm going to twist this one. You know, I've been gluing pipe for a long time, and I've never had a joint fail, even whenever I didn't twist it. So I'm pretty sure we'll be fine. Not that I'm advocating not twisting. Now we're going to slip in our uh, pipe cap bushing. Look at that, seat's great. So what we're going to do is just drill a hole here in this street elbow in the bottom right here. And we're just going to pull this guy through. So when you put this in, a little bit of lubricant goes a long way. Yeah, spit on a little bit. Now this is kind of a tricky joint because you want the alignment to look good so that these two pieces line up perfectly this way. So what I did is I put extra glue on it. That makes it slippery and gives you a little bit more time to get it right. I don't uh, usually use pipe dope. What's it called? Pipe thread sealant, I guess. Um, but I had a buddy who's an air conditioner tech, and he came over and I had a potato gun that just would not seal. Um, so he showed me how he uses, does this. And uh, I've tried to retape the joint half dozen times, and he did it once with this uh, pipe thread goop, and it worked great. So he said the first thing he does is just puts a light coating onto the threads. He also said this is the good stuff. It's more expensive, but one of Canada's is going to last you a lifetime, so just get the good stuff. So then he puts the Teflon tape on, and then he puts a little bit more thread goop on it. Great, there we go. This guy's almost ready to go. This is a modified sprinkler valve. Now what we do is, first thing you do is take out the solenoid, which goes right here. This is the round thing that's usually got the wires hanging off of it. Then you take off this cap, and if you look really close down inside there, I guess you can't see it anyways, 
there's a little bitty hole and from the back side after you've taken these screws out and you've taken this plastic piece off you put just a little bit of epoxy putty where that hole is that seals this up so it can't escape then usually there's on a lot of valves there's a little twisty thing right here you can use to regulate the flow what I do is pull that out and then sometimes you're lucky and these are pipe threads which is the case with this valve sometimes these aren't pipe threads and so what you have to do is uh, go buy a cheap set of pipe hat dies like this from Harbor Freight and the smallest one here is going to be a quarter inch pipe thread and what you can do is you can drill out what's there and you can just run this tap in and so the relief valve we're about to put on is just a standard air compressor blower this is a quarter inch um, pipe thread right here and I've got a short three inch nipple um, and then I actually have this elbow I just happen to have it laying around and so it'll make a great addition to this one An interesting thing whenever you're wrapping something with Teflon tape to make a good seal, you always want to make sure that you wrap it in the direction that the threads are going to go whenever you screw it in. The reason for this is that this makes it so that as you screw it in, the Teflon tape gets put on further. Because if you wrap it incorrectly, then as you screw it in, the Teflon tape is going to come out. And uh, I hear a little bit of leaking. I really just want to give this a go. so. We're going to go over to the air compressor and try it that way. <laughs> this is going to be great. So here we go with our first test shot. Oh, that works awesome. So that's it. Until next time.